Then in 1658, the Virginia General Assembly established the Mattapanai Indian Reservation, and the tribe still lives there today. Yes, Stella. You mean that there's Native Americans alive in Virginia? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, like me. <laughs> what? You don't look Native, and you live like two houses over from me. Stella, not all Virginia Indians live on reservations or wear ceremonial clothes. Keenan is actually a member of the Chickahominy tribe. Really? So right now there's more than one tribe in Virginia? Yeah, right now there are 11 different Virginia Indian tribes recognized by the state of Virginia. There's my tribe, the Chickahominy, and the Eastern Chickahominy. There's also the Mattapana, the Pamunkey, the Rappahannock, the Upper Mattapana, the Nazamin, the Monacan Indian Nation, the Cherenakanataway, the Nataway of Virginia, and the Patawomack. Wow, I'll never remember all those names. But now you know there are a lot of us. Okay, but aren't all the tribes pretty much the same? Well, even though all Virginia Indians have some similar beliefs and histories, each tribe has their own cultures and traditions. No two are the same. Keenan, would you tell the class a little bit about each tribe? Okay, well right now there are two tribes that have reservations, the Mattapana and the Pamunkey. They signed treaties with England back in the 1600s. The Mattapana Reservation is in King William County. Why is it called a reservation? A reservation is land that has been set aside for tribal members to live or gather for events. We knew that that land, that land was our identity to help us hold on to who we were. And our forefathers told us, and they tell us to this day, whoever you do, do not let go of this land. And we do not. Every year we have a powwow and we dance and it, we drum and it shows our traditions. I'm proud that we live here. On the reservation today, the Mattapana tribe has houses, a church, a museum, a marine science center, and even a fish hatchery. What's a fish hatchery? It's a building where people raise fish. The Mattapana raise American shad, and they also tag fish, watch the water quality, and work with schools and other people in the area to keep the water clean and healthy. Sounds like a lot of work. It is, but raising shad is important to the Mattapana because their ancestors used the fish as one of the main things they ate. The Pamunkey work hard to keep a fish hatchery on their reservation too. The Pamunkey tribe also raises shad in King William County. With our hatchery, we milk the male shad and squeeze the eggs out of the female shad, mix them together and then they grow in the hatchery until they're big enough and we shoot them back out in the river because they have become endangered, the American shad. So that's why the hatchery, but always the fishing. We're modernized now, but we never forgot what we had learned by our ancestors. The Pamunkey Reservation also has a museum which has examples of one of the tribe's oldest traditions, pottery. They used to make pottery? Yeah, the Pamunkey have started a pottery school and they try to fix ancient pots made by their ancestors. We get our clay right from the river and we process it so it's ready. Then there's temper and that put into the clay so it'll be fired. Still today, our pottery will last in a fire pit for 50 years or more. How long had the Pamunkey been making pottery? No one knows when they started, but it was a long time before Jamestown was built. If you didn't have plastic baggies or containers, then you needed to make your own containers. These pots were very beautiful and practical. That's right, but no matter what the Pamunkey Indians made, it was always here in Virginia. We've never migrated or never relocated anywhere. Uh, we've always been here, and we live on our um, ancestral grounds uh, today, just like we did thousands of years ago. When the colonists came from England, the Pamunkey were one of the most powerful tribes in the Powhatan Alliance. What was the Powhatan Alliance? The alliance was made up of many tribes that lived in the area around Jamestown. This alliance was led by Powhatan, the father of Pocahontas. Yeah, I've heard Pocahontas. Right, and Powhatan lived most of the year in a place called Werewokomo along the York River. Werewins means chief, and Kamoka means settlement. Another important tribe that was allied with Powhatan was my tribe, the Chickahominy. When Jamestown was first built, the tribe lived close by at the mouth of the Chickahominy River, but now most of them live around Charles City County. When the settlers arrived, they were greeted by upwards of 35 tribes who were indigenous to this area. Among them were the Chickahominy Indians. Did those tribes try to kick out the settlers because they lived so close? Actually, the Chickahominy and other tribes traded with the settlers and showed them how to plant corn and tobacco. In fact, Chickahominy means people of the coarse pounded corn. 
we not only will do for our own people, we'll do for other people that are in need. I think that's one of the greatest things that we could say about the Indian people is they will help other people. While Powhatan was the leader of many tribes, the Chickahominy had their own tribal council under him. Today, they are still led by a tribal council of 12 men and women. In the council, they have a chief and two assistant chiefs. All of them are elected by votes from the tribe's members. Oh, huh. that's like the United States Congress, the president and the vice president. That's right, and the same is true for the Chickahominy Tribe Eastern Division. The Eastern Chickahominy Tribe is located in New Kent County. And they have a government like the Chickahominy Tribe? Right, and all the leaders are elected by tribal members. Understanding how governments work is important so that the tribes can work with the Virginia state government and the United States federal government. Sometimes tribes even work with other countries. The Eastern Chickahominy elected a new chief around the same time they made a trip to England where they taught about their tribe. My cousin stepped up as the chief of the tribe, and he resigned, and that's where I picked it up. My first trip to England was the first time I was a chief. <laughs> so what makes the Eastern Division different from the other Chickahominy? They were actually both one tribe until the early 1900s. The Eastern Chickahominy decided to make their own tribal government because it was too far to travel all the way to Charles City County for tribal meetings. So do they live on a reservation? No. Most Virginia Indians no longer have reservations, but they do have areas that they think are the land of their ancestors, like the Rappahannock, who have been buying property around their historic lands. The Rappahannock tribe is in King and Queen County, and they elected Ann Richardson as chief in 1998. Since then, the Rappahannock have bought over 100 acres of land. We've purchased some land within our tribal base. We're taking that land back for the tribe's possession, for future development, for housing and cultural development. Why is land so important to these tribes? Many Virginia Indians believe the earth is sacred and a blessing from the Great Spirit. We operated and lived off of the land and by the land. And so we have a philosophy that if the land is defiled and sick, the people become defiled and sick. The land is important to Virginia Indians because it helps them hold on to their heritage and ancient traditions. We are doing classes on all the various traditions and children are taught the tradition and the meanings. They've taught tribal values so that they know what's real to them in the world and what's important to them. And the Upper Mattapana also teach tribal values. The Upper Mattapana tribe is in King William County. Are they related to the Mattapani tribe? Well, both tribes lived along the Mattapani River, but the Upper Mattapani lived farther north. In 1919, they built a one-room schoolhouse called the Sharon Indian School. In the 1960s, because of the Civil Rights Movement, Virginia Indians were allowed to go to Virginia public schools. Sharon Indian School is one of the most important aspects of our history because it led our people to be able to get a formal education at a time when it was very difficult for any of our people to get any sort of formal education at all. They were able to get to the seventh and eighth grade and many of them were able to go on and get a college education because of that. Most Virginia Indians want to give their kids a good education. They want them to go to college and get jobs that the parents couldn't get. One of the things that I feel pretty strongly about the Upper Mattapani tribe is that we were really, really significant in trying to reach out and get our people higher education. Some programs have even been made to show Virginia Indian kids the good things about going to college. These programs want to help all of the American Indians in Virginia, like the Nanzimen. Their tribe lives near the cities of Suffolk and Chesapeake. The Nanzimen would like to build a copy of one of their ancient villages called Matanoc, which will have a museum, hiking trails, a place for powwows, a campsite, a travel center, and even grounds to rebury ancient skeletons. It's a really big project for these American Indians. Hey, Keenan. Yeah? Is it okay that we're saying Indian and not Native American? Well, Indian would actually mean someone from the country of India, but Native Americans or American Indians could both be used to describe this country's indigenous people. And Virginia Indians would describe the state's indigenous people. The people who have lived here before the Europeans arrived have been called by many names that were given to describe who we are. Native American, American Indian, indigenous people, 
anything that I'm seen as, as long as it's seen as something respectful, I don't have a preference. The way I was raised, to be proud of what I am, no matter what people call you. That makes sense. Thanks. Sure, we like to teach people about our cultures. I want to see further education of our heritage, of our culture, of our respect for the earth, for the creator, and an understanding of where we come from and what we are, what we respect, what we want to maintain as our culture and preserve this for the future generations. So that's why they want to build Madinoc. That's right, and it's going to take a lot of land. Another tribe that used to have a lot of land is the Monacan Indian Nation. The Monacan Indian Nation is in Amherst County, but a long time ago, the Monacan controlled half of the land that would become Virginia. Wow, so there were a lot of them? Still are, with about 1,400 members. Right now, the Monacan owned a large piece of land on Bear Mountain, where they have their tribal museum, school, church, cultural center, and even burial grounds. Kind of creepy to live near a burial ground. No, actually the Monacan bless this ground so that the land is very sacred and spiritual to them. Our people have always been a culture of folks who honor their ancestors. We were the mound builders in Virginia and there are still several mounds throughout Virginia that contain the remains of our ancestors. Blessing burial grounds is something they have been doing for thousands of years. Scholars say we've probably been here 10,000 years, maybe longer. If you ask our elders, they say we've always been here. Archaeologists have recently found artifacts that make them think people lived here 18,000 years ago. And then we've got one, two, three, four blades, two pieces of a point that fit together. These probably have not moved in more than 13,500 years. If you look at the stone and the raw material and the type of tools and things that they were making, they were well established here. Since they have been here for so many years, they have formed many traditions, like the Monacan, who had a special role for women. We are matrilineal. That means we belong to our mother's clan, not our father's. Women were the matriarchs among our people, and they were not slaves or servants to the men of the tribe. We could work in the fields, we could skin, we could hunt, we could do all those things. Among my people, we owned the property and the house that we lived in, and the man only owned what he wore and the tools that he worked with, and everything else was owned by the women. Back then, the chiefs had a lot of power, but we had the clan mothers. And even the chiefs would talk with these women about things that affected the people on a daily basis. The women had a great deal to say in a lot of the things that the head of the tribes would do. Keeping traditions like this helped the Monacan pass on their heritage. I'm making honeysuckle baskets, which was passed down from my grandmother many, many years ago. I've been waiting around 50 years. The honeysuckle basket was used to store your dried foods and you might, your beans, corn, nuts, and berries. Another way of keeping their heritage is by learning the ancient languages. When the colonists came, there were three major Virginia Indian languages, Algonquin, Garakoyan, and Siouan. They didn't all speak the same language? No, just like in Europe, different nations had different languages, but a lot of tribes could speak more than one. Today, many of Virginia Indian tribes want their members to learn to speak one of these languages to make sure the languages are never lost. When Jamestown was built, most of the tribes that spoke Algonquin belonged to the Powhatan Alliance, the Mattapana, the Pamunkey, the Chickahominy, and the Eastern Chickahominy, the Rappahannock, the Upper Mattapana, the Nazaman, and the Patawomac. Only the Monacan spoke Siouan in Virginia. The Cherokee spoke Iroquoian, but they no longer hold any land in Virginia. The two other tribes who spoke Iroquoian were the Nodawe and the Cherenaka Nodawe. The Nodawe of Virginia tribe is in Southampton County. They try to keep their heritage through their community house and interpretive center in Capron, Virginia. Is that like a museum? There is a museum, but people who teach, tell stories, make crafts, do art, and put on shows all use the buildings and grounds. Historians have written about our tribe, but none of them have lived here, so the community house gives us the opportunity to tell our story in our own words. Man, you're right, Keenan. These tribes really are different. Through time, every tribe has its own unique challenges that make it evolve in its own unique way. And another tribe that has changed over time is the Cherenaka Nodaway tribe, which is also in Southampton County. Here they
they still learn to speak their ancient language. We were blessed in this great commonwealth with three linguistic groups of tribes. The Algonquin speakers, the Suan speakers, and the Iroquois speakers. We are Iroquois speakers. In our tribal language, again, we say, Kwekahante, Iisan Ki, Laskahi, Creator, my heart sees. Kwekahante, Iisan Ki, Tarahanta, Creator, my heart hears. But most importantly, we say, Kwekahante, Iisan Ki, Baswika, my heart speaks. Ah, ah. While the Nautaway of Virginia, the Cherenaka Nautaway, and the Patawomack tribes have been around a long time, they weren't actually recognized as Virginia tribes until 2010. What does that mean? All 11 tribes of the state had to ask to be recognized as an Indian nation by the Virginia state government. The Patawomack tribe is one of the recently state-recognized tribes. The Patawomack tribe is in Stafford County, and they were part of the Powhatan Alliance. So if they were in the Powhatan Alliance, they spoke Algonquin? Uh-huh. The Patawomack work very hard to teach Algonquin and even have classes for anyone who wants to learn the language. Huh. You won't find that on Rosetta Stone. Nope. Mancha Keita Coos. Near Paia Temion. Near Paia Poto Papuki. Near Paia Papa Mia Musatagua. Coos. Now want to mend. Manu mama, Winscup, Mais, Wingut Scale, Kina, much of Katekos, Kina. The Padawomek also do a lot of ancient traditions like cooking over fires, making traditional homes, and making baskets, music, arrowheads, farming tools, fishing tools, fishing nets, and tanning hides. When we started realizing the traditional things like the tanning and the snares, that type of activities were getting lost, we started coming back together as a tribe, started doing these reenactments to help preserve our ancient ways. I think that that is the single most important aspect of Indian culture, their traditions and their crafts and things that they brought with them. And if we don't teach these young people those skills, they will be lost. The Padawomack have even made a couple of dugouts. What's a dugout? It's the trunk of a tree carved out to make a canoe. The Padawomack used a 90-foot tree to make two working dugouts. One was 17 feet long, but the other was 31 feet long. Whoa, that could hold like half the class. Probably. I found this big poplar tree had blown over in a storm, and I figured it didn't make a good canoe. But it was up in the woods, so we needed somebody to move them, so that's how we got the whole tribe involved. So are the Padawomack the only tribe that makes dugouts? Actually, many tribes have that skill, and all Virginia Indians have many other common beliefs. Oh, I know. Like you're dancing in music. Sort of. A lot of our traditions are spiritual. Religion is very important to most of Virginia's tribes. Today, a lot of these beliefs are a mix of both ancient Indian spirituality and Christianity. The churches were very, very important in holding the groups of people together by holding homecoming ceremonies and things like that every year where people would come together. The church was more or less the hub of our community. Our church was a focal point of our community, still is today. So is dancing part of your religion? Yeah, dancing is a part of worship. Dancing was a way that Indian people practiced part of their ceremonies. Doing the dances was a way that they used to give thanks and even to say prayers as they would do their dances and they would walk and step and pray to the Creator. Dancing, music, and ceremonial clothes are usually parts of a spiritual ceremony called a powwow. I've heard of that. Isn't that like a big meeting? Sort of, but what most people don't know is that powwows are mostly spiritual ceremonies. You may see one and think it looks like a party, and although it is fun, there are a lot of traditions that are spiritual. What sort of traditions? Well, like the dance area is called an arbor, and it is always blessed before the beginning of a powwow so that the land is sacred to us. The arbor is always in the shape of a circle, and anyone who comes in should always walk or dance in a clockwise direction. You should also come in and go out in the same place to keep the circle sacred. People come together in ceremony united in the circle of life. It is a time for looking forward and looking back. We are all in the circle, in that unbroken chain of existence. So do you have powwows after church every Sunday? Well, we could, but many of the tribes of Virginia want to use powwows to teach other people. 
Each tribe has a large powwow every year, and usually anyone can come and watch the ceremony where they can learn more about Virginia Indian cultures and traditions. One of the important messages of a powwow is it conveys the identity of Native Americans to the rest of the American society. Many people who go to these powwows probably leave with a lot of ideas changed in their minds. The whole reason that we put on the event is to educate. We don't do this to entertain people because we could have a powwow and not invite anyone. And it would be the same powwow for us. Most powwows also begin by thanking tribal members who have been in the United States military. But you say it's fun too, right? Yeah, there's a lot of food, music, and dancing. It's all a part of the tradition. So the music is like religious songs then? Sometimes, but mostly it's the drumming that's sacred to us. Most Virginia tribes believe that using a drum is spiritual and it's used in many religious ceremonies. The drum is the heartbeat of a powwow. The wood is nature, trees, plants. The skin on the drum symbolizes our animals. We appreciate all of it. The music, the drum, as we sing and gather around it, our spirits are uplifted in song, and the songs that we sing are warrior songs, or prayer songs, and they're song of thanks. And you can only dance or sing if you wear the old clothes. Not all Virginia Indians dress in regalia to dance and sing, but the ceremonial clothes are part of the powwow. Oh, so you don't have to wear that stuff to the grocery store. Most of the time, Virginia Indians only wear regalia to powwows and other religious ceremonies. Even though we could wear them all the time, most tribal members wear the same clothes to work and school as everyone else. The regalia is what we wear to show honor and respect to our ancestors and to try to hold on to part of where we've come from, but that we are just plain people who live just like everybody else. Working at the doctor's office as a Native American, I have pictures on my desk of my friend and I with their regalias, and people come up to me and they say, are you really Indian? And I say, of course, I'm Chickahominy, and they've never heard of that. They're just used to those big tribes, so they don't think I'm a real Indian because they've never heard of Chickahominy before. We call the ceremonial clothes regalia, not costumes. We wear a regalia that's a lot like what our ancestors used to wear. Most of it is made from deer skin and different animal furs. So everyone wore the same thing? Most of the Virginia Indians wore deer skin because that was what they had close by. The tribes of Virginia are all a part of the Eastern Woodland Indians. This group is made up of all the tribes in the east half of the land that would become the United States. Because the land was mostly woods, the same plants and animals were close by to all the tribes of the Eastern Woodland Indians, so they had a lot of the same ways of making clothes, food, and houses. Yeah, they all lived in teepees, right? No, those were actually built by the Midwestern tribes. Most of the Eastern Woodland Indians built longhouses. They were made from thin trees bent into the shape of a long barrel. Then they were usually covered with grass mats. Although most of them were very long, the Monacan usually made theirs look like a circle. So they could fit a lot of people? Definitely, and they lasted a long time. Most longhouses could be used by many generations of the same family. Inside, they usually had fur beds, storage, and even a fire pit. The ceiling usually had openings so that the smoke could escape. All of their houses, clothes, and food came from the land's natural resources. Like corn and shad. Right. The Eastern Woodland Indians ate different foods during different seasons of the year. In the spring, they could gather berries and catch the most fish. In the summer, they could usually farm beans, corn, and squash. In the fall, they could gather their crops. And in the winter, they had to use food they had saved from the rest of the year, but they could still catch and eat birds. They actually hunted all year long and ate a lot of deer. All of their food could be stored and cooked right inside their longhouses. But you guys don't live in longhouses anymore. No, Virginia Indians live in all sorts of houses today. Virginia Indians are everywhere, Della. They're your friends, coworkers, neighbors, and classmates. That's neat. Thanks, Keenan. You're welcome. Yes, thanks for sharing. I like to help people learn more about Virginia Indians because there are a lot of things people think about us that aren't true. One thing I really want people to understand is that we're still here. 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 We're here today, and we're not going anywhere.